What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Thank you guys for continuing to allow me to serve you all of this great content information on a regular basis, giving you insight and information on how you can get your money up, how you can uh, level up when it comes to being a great father, a great man, so on and so forth. I'm always going to continue to bring you all these fire interviews, this content. I got new stuff dropping on a regular basis. Um, and I'm serving up on a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night, I'm going to be live streaming because I didn't believe that I would have the capacity to really, really mine out what it is that I wanted to talk to you all about. Uh, so I'm going to be live streaming on Tuesday night. I turned the light on. Uh, I'd rather be cruising, cruising with you, cruising in the dark. I'm about to jump out the car really quick. I got to run up to the store, getting some drinks. Uh, we're going to be kicking it. We're going to be chilling. We're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to party. But more importantly, I think it's important for us to draw a line in the sand. And I'm going to tell you why. One thing that you can't say is that Anton has not always been absolutely positively um, consistent with what it is that I stand on, stand for, and my message. I've always said that black culture is trash as far as the things that we celebrate the most. And now I'm starting to see a movement. I'm starting to see a movement with the people. And the people are saying, you know what, Anton? I hated you for saying it. You said it years ago. I've been highlighting it all the time. Y'all got mad at me when I said it on the Lapeef Network. Y'all got mad at me when I said it on my channels. Y'all got mad at me for rolling with Charleston White and saying it. But somehow, some way, the movement and the tide has shifted. And I don't know if it's just a bunch of people that aligns with what it is that I do and what it is that I say. But I'm trying to tell you that it's a it's a group of people that's like, yo, Anton, I'm not necessarily sure that I was, that I, me, Anton, was wrong about it. No, as a matter of fact, I was absolutely right. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time for y'all to actually come around. Let me set this down, see if I can chill that out. I set it up a little bit. You know, I'm in the, the Benzo, soon to be the Enzo. Chilling, vibing. Uh, let me set this down a little bit because I don't always like holding it, but I always be holding it. Hmm. I don't know. That's not really working the way I want it to. Uh, this is really impromptu, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just trying to figure it out. There we go. There we go. We gigging it. We gigging it. But I don't always have the 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 most political way in order to tell y'all. I just tell y'all what it is that I know and I give it to you straight. I give it to you raw. And the truth is is that at some point, now that you realize that I was right, you're going to have to draw a line in the sand. And drawing a line in the sand meaning that the thing that is worse for our communities, which is the thing that you take in every single day, and which I, I tell y'all all the time, it's important for you to divest against the thing that's the worst for us. The thing that's the worst for us right now is rap culture. I don't care who created it. I don't care where it come from. I don't care about the pioneers. It's a lot of people. Listen, the majority of the people that got rich off of rap music ain't even black people. And I'm not even a blackity black guy. Like, I'm not the pro black guy. I'm the guy that rock with people based off of character. But I'm just going to tell you, for the most of y'all that always trying to rock with the black culture thing and a blackity black or whatever, how much more are y'all going to allow them to sell y'all this culture that got y'all stealing cars, going to jail, qualifying yourself, validating yourself with regard to things that don't even add any value to your life, such as the jewelry, the cars, and all of this stuff. And I'm not saying that the jewels is bad when you actually buy assets that appreciate over time, but you busting down your watches, you busting down your chains, you continuing to buy Balenciaga, and half of y'all ain't even got $10,000 to be able to bail yourself out of jail for half the things that you're doing that ain't right. You sold crack to our communities, you did it through the music. You, you taught us how to look at women negatively and, and, and told us that bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. How much more do you need and how much more evidence do you need now that you realize through people like T.I. that they're so hypocritical? You know what's so funny? Well, on my live stream tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down. I'm going to break it all the way down until it can't be broke no more. It was a video on a Beef 3 DVD. Yeah, I remember back in like 2005, 4 or 5, something like that, right? And he was beefing with Lil Flip. Lil Flip's father tried to come and mediate and, and get rid of the beef. And T.I. turned it down and said, nah, homie, he got himself into it. He going to have to get himself out of it. Now he trying to, now he trying to cake for his ugly, funky, filthy, dirty looking son that has been privileged his whole life and trying to act tough. 
now that Charleston White, he, he didn't threaten the wrong one, and now, you know, he's trying to cake for him. I get it. But maybe you should have checked your son. I can't tell you whether or not you're a good father or not because I've never been in your household, but at the same time, you should have checked your son, homie. I seen the video when you was trying to give your son some game and I guess y'all was vibing in the studio or something. Man, he wasn't listening to you because I'm gonna just tell you, the way in which we're tra we, we supposed to raise our kids is to be a reflection of the thing that we want them to be and for our daughters, the man that we would want them to marry. And so if we see that he ain't listening to you, then why should we listen to you through the music and why are you trying to get Charleston White canceled when you still got your gun bars up? You still got your gun bars up. Worst people for the community ever. At, at some point, I'm asking you guys, when are you going to draw a line in the sand for the things that's the worst for us? I believe that a lot of our OGs failed us. They didn't give us the game with regard to marriage. They didn't really stand up on anything. They were the freest ones of their generation and they failed. They fumbled and they actually took 2 million steps backwards as a result of their own actions and then passed that same generational trauma and curses down to us. And now we got an opportunity to really make a change and do things that's in the best interest of the people that's coming after us. And you talking to a person that actually pour into people. I invest in my people's businesses. I align with my bag chasers. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as pin to the top of the chat. I don't take money from the communities. I pour into the communities. I built my own and I got my own money outside of all of this content creation stuff. So now this is just the cherry on top. This is us continuing to have the conversations authentically without trying to pivot and, and sell a narrative based off of popularity. We just getting it out the mud and we just authentically building straight up. Make sure y'all, again, if y'all want to align with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're going in, tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as, as well as pinned to the top of the chat. If you need to kick it with me personally, email me at antondaniels413 at gmail.com and we're going to get you booked for a Zoom call or a personal call. But at what point do we draw a line in the sand? Yeah, we... Now you paying attention. Now you realize what the problem is. But the question becomes, at what point do you then say, I, right, I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm not going to continue to support the people that's actually selling the poison in the, in the form of what it is that we have in our ears. Listen, the power of life and death is in the tongue. It's in, it's in the tongue. A lot of y'all don't even realize that you hypnotize and to, and to communicate in a certain type of way and to wearing your clothes a certain type of way and to rocking out. Me too. Me too. Rap has been one of the biggest vices. As a matter of fact, I will say the hip hop culture has been one of the biggest vices for me to overcome in my lifetime. I had a conversation about how I was giving up rap six, seven years ago. It's on my channel. Look it up. Y'all still sleep. You sleep at the wheel because you're really not paying attention to what was worse for us and why we continue to adopt the things that don't add any value into our life. And I'm telling you, we need to move differently. We need to be a little bit more careful about what it is that we put into our bodies, including the music that we listen to. And these rappers are frauds. Listen, not only are they frauds, not only should your kids not look up to being a basketball player or a rapper, Right. They don't want to be engineers. They don't want to be owners. They don't want to be businessmen. They don't want to be doctors and lawyers anymore. That used to be the thing. Now they're chasing these rappers because everybody want to stunt. What I'm telling you is that they have reprogrammed your kids into getting themselves killed. And now we got the red zone in Detroit, Chirac in Chicago, L.A., New York, Atlanta, all of these overtown. We got all of these places. That's the worst for us. And at what point are you going to stand up and say, all right, enough is enough? Enough is enough. Well, me personally, I'm done. Um, you know, I already been through my line in the sand. I ain't stunting these dudes. I don't really care nothing about what it is that they talking about. They don't do nothing for me. Ain't never did nothing for me except for create a headache. Um, and they not adding no value into my life. So listen, I advise y'all to do the same. Draw a line in the sand and stop subjecting yourself to the things that's the worst for you. I love you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.